Few people were prepared for this. After years of promising a truly affordable electric car, Elon Musk decided to shatter expectations with Tesla's most audacious launch. The Model 2, announced for 2026 at a price of US $12,149. At a time when the average American sees new cars nearing $49,000, gasoline above $4.50 per gallon, and insurance 29% more expensive than two years ago, this announcement sounded like a bombshell in the automotive market. And it wasn't just the price that caught attention. Musk was direct. This is the car that will end car bills forever. This, of course, set off alarm bells worldwide. The Model 2 wasn't created to compete with BMW, to shine at the Super Bowl, or to flaunt its status. It came with a different purpose, to be the last car someone over 55 will ever need to buy. And that's no exaggeration. For this segment of the population, which currently spends an average of $9,400 a year just to keep a car running, the idea of cutting costs on fuel, maintenance, insurance, and avoiding the brutal depreciation of combustion engine vehicles seems more like a dream than a new launch. But Tesla isn't dreaming. It's cutting, optimizing, reinventing every screw. And it all begins with a bold strategy, breaking the myth that cheap cars are bad cars. Tesla is promising to deliver a complete electric vehicle with 300 miles of range, innovative design, robust structure, and almost non-existent operating costs. It seems too good to be true, and perhaps that's why many people are suspicious. After all, how can a car cost less than half the price of a Honda Civic and still promise to last twice as long? The answer lies in the details that no one wants to admit. Compromises were made, and some of them are quite profound. Tesla itself admits that it didn't build the Model 2 to save the planet. The green discourse takes a back seat here. The real mission is to survive in a hostile market without depending on subsidies that disappeared in 2025, six months earlier than planned. This led to a complete redesign of the Model 2 project, from how it's assembled to the number of parts, sensors, and electronic components. Everything that wasn't essential was cut. But the most curious thing is that, instead of making the car cheaper, this decision ended up creating a new, almost revolutionary concept. The Model 2 isn't a mini Model 3. It's a new type of vehicle. It's as if Tesla looked at what really matters to those retiring, basic comfort, zero headaches, and predictable costs, and designed something entirely focused on that. No glass sunroof no complicated electrical adjustments. The idea is simple, fewer things to break, fewer unexpected expenses. In fact, Elon Musk was clear in saying that the secret isn't in offering more features, but in eliminating everything that has become superfluous in the last 20 years of the automotive industry. For many, the math is the turning point. While an average combustion engine car can cost over $21,000 in maintenance and depreciation over five years, the Model 2 promises a total cost of less than $6,000 in the same period. That represents savings of over $15,000, money that can be redirected toward a more comfortable retirement or even financing a home. That's why many people are saying that this Tesla isn't just another car. It's a paradigm shift for those who have always seen the automobile as a money pit. And while the price is the main trigger, the Model 2 is being presented as something bigger, a new concept of ownership, a car for those who don't want to depend on mechanics, for those who are tired of changing oil, for those who want to charge the battery while sleeping and not waste time at gas stations. It's a car that challenges the logic of having to spend, breaking decades of custom where every driver was forced to live with maintenance and headaches. And the most intriguing thing, all this for less than $13,000. It is precisely in this promise of 300 miles of range that the first questions begin to appear. How can a car with a battery of only 53 .30 deliver the same range as the Model 3 with 60 kg of 
The answer lies in a combination of unconventional factors. First, the use of aluminum ion batteries, which are about 18% lighter than traditional lithium batteries. Then, aerodynamics refined to the bone with a drag coefficient of only 0.19, lower than that of the Model 3 itself. And finally, a thermal system that learns the driver's habits and prepares the battery even before leaving home. This combination is clever, bold, and risky. Under ideal conditions, the Model 2 can indeed deliver 300 miles. But in cold locations like Minnesota, that number plummets to around 210. This isn't unique to Tesla. All electric cars suffer from range loss in cold weather. But it shows that anyone intending to drive it in icy regions needs to understand these limitations well. The good news is that the energy regeneration system has also evolved, recovering up to 22% of kinetic energy compared to 18% in the previous generation. The most curious thing is that this aluminum ion battery is unprecedented in mass production. It's the first time it's left the labs and hit the streets, manufactured by cattle in a new plant in Nevada. In laboratory tests, the promise is ambitious. 20,000 charge cycles, which could mean up to 600,000 miles of lifespan before dropping to 90% capacity. The problem is that these numbers will only be validated in 2033. In other words, whoever buys the Model 2 now is, in a way, testing this technology in real life, a risk that may be worthwhile or not. This is where the owner's profile comes in. For those who intend to keep the car for five to seven years, the risk is minimal. The warranty itself covers eight years or 120,000 miles. But those who are thinking of driving 250,000 miles with it over 15 years need to understand that they are entering a kind of undeclared pilot program. Tesla knows this, but also knows that there is a huge customer base willing to accept this trade-off. Pay less now and see what happens later. For many, it's a calculated risk. For others, a leap into the dark. But the engineers thought about how to help the car survive daily use with minimal energy loss. A curious example is the battery preheating. The system detects that the driver usually leaves at 7.15 a.m. and starts heating the battery at 6.50 a.m. on cold days, gaining an extra 8 to 12 miles of range first thing in the morning. It's as if the car has developed a habit. This not only improves efficiency, but also increases the lifespan of the cell which suffers less when it is already warm at the time of starting. It's a small automation with a direct impact on daily life. Even so, it's worth noting that this isn't the ideal car for those who live in extreme climates and drive long distances daily. In those situations, the best option is still the Model 3 Long Range, with its 82 kWh battery and greater thermal robustness. The Model 2 was designed for an urban or suburban routine, where usage is predictable, distances are shorter, and home charging is possible. If it fits this profile, it can be a brilliant choice. If not, it might be disappointing. If there's one thing that immediately catches the eye in the Model 2, it's the door design. Instead of traditional side-hinged doors, Tesla opted for a bold and extremely functional design butterfly doors. Unlike the Model X's Falcon wings, these are simple, mechanical, with a single gas piston and no electronic sensors. The result? A system that is not only cheaper, but also incredibly practical, especially for those with reduced mobility. The space needed to open the door has dropped from 24 to just 11 inches, making life much easier in tight urban parking spaces. But it's not just the width of the opening that makes a difference. Studies with over 800 people between 58 and 74 years old revealed a curious fact. Getting into a car with conventional doors requires a 35 degree degree to 40 degree twist of the torso, in addition to lifting the leg at an uncomfortable angle. For those with prostheses, hip or lower back pain, this can be enough to give up on the trip. With butterfly doors, this movement drops to 12 degree to 15 degree, and the effort to open the door is minimal, between 8 and 12 pounds of force. 
Even someone with weak hands or joint problems can open them easily. Another advantage lies in durability and maintenance. While the Model X doors have 12 motors and cost up to use $4,500 to repair, the Model 2 doors are made with 316 stainless steel hinges, tested to withstand 100,000 opening cycles between 15 degrees C and 49 degrees C. If the gas piston needs replacing, the repair takes 20 minutes and costs a 100 T, $20, something even a neighborhood mechanic can do. This gives the owner a freedom that almost no modern car offers, independence from specialized workshops and predictable maintenance. It's this kind of detail that shows how the Model 2 was designed for real-world use. The driver's seat, for example, has been raised to 24.2 inches, practically the same height as a Honda Accord, and offers a 102 darn angle between the hip and knee. It may seem too technical, but this number matters a lot to those who have had problems with herniated discs or undergone knee surgery. One of the most talked about tests was that of a 68-year-old man with bilateral knee replacements. Upon exiting the car, he said, this is better than my Camry. The interior design also favors simplicity. The doors open more upwards than to the sides, meaning the driver doesn't have to bend down as much to get in. The opening height reaches 42 inches, reducing the chance of hitting your head, something common in cars with a lowered roof. This is particularly useful for those with limited neck or spine movement. The lateral opening space is also 11% larger than in the Model 3, making it easier not only to get in, but also to load bags, backpacks, and even medical equipment like folding canes. Another interesting point is how Tesla managed to keep this system inexpensive without sacrificing robustness. The absence of motors and sensors doesn't mean fragility. On the contrary, Fewer moving parts means less chance of failure. And since there's no electronics involved, there's no risk of being locked out of the car due to a software malfunction, something that has already happened with some Model X models. Here, the good old mechanical system does its job efficiently and reliably, which frankly is a relief. Behind this charming simplicity lies brutally advanced engineering hidden within the Model 2's structure. Instead of assembling the car piece by piece, as most automakers still do, Tesla implemented so-called gigacasting, a technique where the front and rear of the car are molded as single pieces of cast aluminum. It's as if the vehicle's skeleton is printed in 90 seconds, replacing more than 70 separate components. This reduces assembly time from hours to minutes and allows Tesla to manufacture half a million units per year using a single factory. However, this innovation comes at a price, and it becomes apparent when it comes time to repair. In conventional vehicles, a side or rear collision usually requires the replacement of isolated parts, which costs between use $2,000 and use $3,600, depending on the impact. With Giga casting, if the single piece of aluminum cracks, it cannot be repaired. Aluminum loses up to 60% of its structural integrity when damaged, forcing the owner to replace the entire affected section. And the cost of this is high. The part alone costs between you $3,200 and $4,100, plus another US $2,400 in labor. For those who frequently drive in urban areas with heavy traffic and a higher risk of minor collisions, this can become a nightmare. Just one impact at 20 miles per hour, the equivalent of a sudden stop resulting in a collision, can result in damages exceeding $6,000. Of course, most insurance policies cover this type of situation, but there are already indications that insurers are raising Tesla car premiums by up to 14%, precisely because of the high cost of structural repairs using gigacasting. At the same time, there's another side to this coin. Because it's a single piece, the Model 2's structure is incredibly rigid. In crash tests, this rigidity has proven extremely effective in protecting vehicle occupants, minimizing cabin deformation. This means that, despite the high repair cost, the chance of escaping unscathed from a crash is much greater. So, 
For an audience over 55 years old, with a history of more cautious driving and a low accident rate, this could be a fair trade-off. Greater safety, even if the repair is expensive, but not all impacts result in financial tragedy. In collisions below 12 miles per hour, such as bumping into a pillar when leaving the garage or lightly hitting another car in the parking lot, the damage is usually limited to bolted-on components, such as bumpers and grills. In these cases, the repair cost ranges from $280 to $420. So, if the driver is careful, it's possible to go years without ever facing the used $6,000 loss that so frightens people. This calculated risk approach is another one of those Tesla-style decisions. Bold, efficient, and requiring the buyer to have a good deal of awareness about what they are acquiring. It's not the type of car made for reckless or novice drivers who are constantly reversing without looking. But for those who have been driving for decades, calmly, patiently, and with few accidents in their history, it's possible to avoid the financial pitfalls of giga casting and reap the benefits of a lighter car, cheaper to produce, and safer in the event of serious collisions. To make such an aggressive price viable, Tesla had to make bold, and in some cases, unpopular choices. The Model 2 doesn't have a panoramic sunroof. It may seem like a small detail, but this decision saves almost $700 per unit. Instead of glass, steel is used, which, in addition to being cheaper, offers 22% more efficient thermal insulation. This translates to less use of air conditioning or heating, which ultimately helps to extend the range by a few more kilometers. Here, every cut was designed to become a practical benefit, not just to reduce costs. The lights have also been simplified. Forget the stylish LED rear strip that became a trademark of the more expensive models. In the Model 2, the taillights are conventional and cost less than use $90 to replace, compared to US $320 for the premium versions. At the front, the headlights are basic LEDs, without adaptive function or intelligent projection. This may disappoint those expecting a high-tech experience, but it pleases those who prefer a car that won't become a nightmare if a bulb burns out. After all, the goal here is financial independence, not ostentation. Inside, the message remains the same. Nothing excessive. The seats are manually adjustable in six directions, instead of the 12 with an electric motor. This saves over $180 per seat. Heated steering? Only with the optional cold weather package, which costs just one $200. Ambient lighting? Those discrete lights that outline the panels? Forget it. Tesla cut that too, saving another $95. In return, it delivered a clean, straightforward, functional interior. It's not luxurious, but it does exactly what it needs to without distractions. Even in the smallest details, you can see this philosophy. There's no carpet lining in the trunk, that front trunk. Its absence saves $42 and prevents the accumulation of dirt and moisture. The windows are single pane glass, which raises the interior noise level at highway speeds to 70 to 72 decibels, louder than the Model Y, but still comparable to a Honda Accord. It's noisier, yes, but nothing that prevents conversations or music. And honestly, 